Okay, this is March the 8th, 2013, and I'm revising this video a little bit to make some stuff a little more clear because the other video was just on the wing. Anyway, um, here's this rod. It's, it's a stainless steel rod, and I soldered it in, well, I welded it into that 3-8 bolt as a drawbar. But the threads on the end were too thin, so I went ahead and I got a quarter inch threaded rod, which I did the same thing. I welded um, a 3 8 bolt that I drilled in the center and tapped it and threaded the rod into it, then welded it. And then here you see it up the top. Comes up the top with a spacer there, and then the two nuts draw it up uh, through the whole quill and through the whole shaft. And it lifts up that uh, holder for the end mill cutter. Anyway, uh, yesterday I did this here piece as a test after I finished that uh, base holding rig. Um, I put the clamps on it, and I put a, it's a half inch uh, stainless steel, well it's not stainless steel, it's coal rolled. And then I uh, ran the... Um, uh, end mill through it to make a slot and then I ran the dovetail through it to make a groove and that holds uh, the front sight for a rifle. Anyway, all the other parts are uh no, I'm not going to do it that way. This pipe, which I showed before, and it goes down to the base, it screws into that base, comes up and it locks up here with two uh, set screws up in the top there, but I'm going to change that to a uh, um, lever kind of set screws that I can lock the head, but I could take this whole head and turn it off of the center of the the lathe and push it to the right, and then I could take this here mount off. Uh, this mount is um, bolted onto uh, the carriage with those bolts, and I bolted that, um, well let's call it a, a workpiece, onto that uh, piece of plate steel and that becomes a clamp down for any work I want to use on the thing on the lathe and then I could uh, take it off when I'm going to use just the lathe for uh, turning anyway that's pretty much it it works pretty good and uh, I'm going to add this on to the video and then maybe you get a better idea of how I did this whole thing March the 8th 2013 and to end, uh, to end this whole story um, and then you can watch the whole video after this here last uh, thing I have to say. There is um, the mill and holder, and you can see the 3-8 bolt that goes in it. And there's the shaft, the quarter-inch rod, which is the drawbar. And I've taken it out, and there's uh, the chuck back in. And now I have my drill back, if I want to do drilling over. And everything is all set up again for uh, milling. Well, turning on the lathe or whatever I want to do. Anyway, uh, the beginning of the video is going to start after this of all the pieces, all the parts, and how it works. And um, some of the dates may be wrong, but uh, and it's a little jumpy, but this is the best I can give you. So hopefully you can see how it's done from a drill press to a milling machine and back to a drill press. Hey Mark, uh, February the 29th, I thought you might appreciate this one. And there's the cone you gave me that I uh, turned down to more of a cone shape. And that's the post that's going to go on. And maybe it'll work.
I already made the bottom of the piece flop, but I'm just running this to show you. Okay, this is March the 6th, 2013, and uh, I've been working on this for about a week now, and I'm going to compile a few videos to show how it's done for uh, anybody else that wants to uh, take the chance and try it. Uh, this is a South Bend lathe, and uh, this is a drill press I got. Uh, I don't know if I can do it that way, but we'll try it this way. Uh, this is a 13 inch drill press and what I did, I drilled the hole down the shaft, quarter inch hole, and I put a threaded rod and on the bottom I put a 3.8 bolt to go into that a holder, that um, holder that I have, all those holders are now, they're Morse tapered too, and they'll all fit into that a hole where the chuck used to go. Anyway, um, I've been working on this here um, rig here. Let's see, we'll take this off. Whoa. And I've been uh, putting a T-groove in the top of this. Actually, I'm making it bigger. And uh, i got one more slot to do, and I'll do a video of it working. And then uh, you can see that this thing really works. What I did, I took a two and a half inch pipe, turned it on the lathe, which I'll splice in the video for it, and put a plate on the bottom and bolted it. And then I had to tape it so it goes up into the head of the drill press. Anyway, this is... Okay, uh, this is the next part. Since the bottom of the T-slot has been widened, I'm uh, widening up the top of uh, the T-slot with a mill cutter. And there's a little shakiness in the whole machine, but uh, what are you going to do? I only paid $50 for this drill press. And a little work and a pipe and uh, some milling and we're going to have a, a bed to lock things down on and do milling with. I guess that's enough. Okay, adding another piece because I'm going on uh, the other way now, taking off um, a little bit on the other side of the groove so that the T-slot will fit. And you can see how it's cracking. Nice and slow. Just a little bit shaky, but not bad. 